What's going on Facebook Live? I am super excited about today. I think we put this on our calendars maybe six weeks ago. Um, I am so excited because there are a lot of people who have helped me in my career. But this lady here, Mary Richardson, has helped me beyond belief. And I'm going to have to tell you the whole story. But today, we are going to discuss foreclosures, short sales, auctions, maybe tax deeds. I'm not sure. <laughs> but I know that you are a distressed real estate expert. And I want you to tell the people who you are. I am Mary Goins Richardson. A country girl from Mississippi. <laughs> I've been in a business for the past 34 years and um, that business has first of all been purchasing properties. Um, we started out on this track 34 years ago, my husband and I, um, creating wealth. And we thought the best way to create that wealth was to tap into one of the streams of income, real estate. So we have um, been involved in that for the past 34 years, buying properties, uh, educating little people, and um, enjoying life. Enjoying life. Now, I was first introduced to you through Mike Thomas at the time that he owned Hybrid Homes. And Ophelia and I, I Ophelia. on a Friday, I believe, came to take the class with you. Hey, oh, hey, Mike. Um, <laughs> and you provided me with so much information. I've had to come back more than one time because you introduced me to five or six different offices downtown. What were those Correct. five or six different places we went? Well, first of all, we uh, took a visit to the, the source of all the information, which is the keeper of the deeds, the recorder's office. We also visited the courthouse to have an understanding of how the system works in the courthouse. Um, and also we went to, I think, three actual live auctions that day. They yes, we did. all in different locations. You know what I remember about the live auction that we went to? There was a young lady who came to bid on someone's behalf. Mm -hmm. And you couldn't have your mobile phone. I don't know if they right. allow that anymore, but you could not at this time have your mobile device. Right, right. And so because she couldn't have her phone in the room, she stood in the doorway and had her phone in her left hand with her left side out the room. Mm -hmm. And she was bitten inside the room. <laughs> it was the funniest thing. And it was like a... It was a whole city block over on yes. Western that she was bidding on. And I'm sitting here because I'm in total amazement, right? Looking around because I had never <laughs> been to an auction. And I'm waiting for the auction to go like one, one thousand, two, 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 two thousand. And it was nothing like that no, at all. No. Um, and so we spent the entire day we did. together. We did. we did. And I had a notebook full of notes and my head was spinning um, because... <laughs> I mean, I know, and my head still spins. I could come back and take the class as if I had never taken the class before. But this is why I want to tell people you increased my income by a, at least a million dollars. It's more than a million dollars. When I took your class, I realized that foreclosures and short sales were coming to the market. Mm -hmm. I took your class in May of 2005, people. Wow. When, yeah, I know. When I got pregnant with Austin... I was nine months pregnant. My husband drove me from Chicago up to Appleton, Wisconsin to take what became the SFR course by the National Association of Realtors so that I could Amazing. get certified to teach it. Okay? Wow. Well, I became an SFR instructor, but it was a one-day course. And I felt as though one day didn't do foreclosures mm -hmm. and short sales any justice. So I end up writing with Freddie. Taylor and Anita Clinton, the <laughs> ADPR, the Accredited Distressed Property Representative. And we put over 5,000 people through that course at a price point of $199. Wow. Wow. I, right. I also went on to teach the SFR course, which is where I developed relationships with Chase Bank, who I now have relationships with the same people who are at a different bank, right? And so that was the start because I'm still really making money from the relationships from teaching the SFR course and the ADPR course because you gave me 
the blueprint, the solid information to understand the foreclosure process from start to finish. From the moment they laid, you laid it out with the timeline. Yeah, and I right. went on to teach, well, 5,000 with one program. So let's say over 10,000 people, foreclosures and short sale information. And so if you have any questions, type your questions in. But what what's a myth about foreclosure or distressed real estate? Um, the myth is coming from a lot of times late night TV, late night TV, that you just go downtown <laughs> and you just pick out a piece of property and you roll with it. Uh, that couldn't be further from the truth. Um, if you're going to do distressed real estate, you really do need to know how to read title. I stress that so much. Um, and any given week, I see people come into the auction and make huge mistakes. And mistakes at the auction is you don't get your money back. Hmm. So education, no refund? No. Education, education, education. It is all it's cracked up to be. Now, I remember you taught us how to read title. We went over mm -hmm. in the basement of one of these city buildings, absolutely, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, we went down and we actually, what were those books we pulled? Um, the time that you did it, we were actually doing manual searches. Yes, we were. We did manual <laughs> searches. And um, uh, with the manual searches, you got to know how to read legal descriptions and all realtors know that you read legal descriptions. How, Marky Lemons? Right to left. We read them backwards. Yes. Ah, see, right. I remember something. You see, I'm over here. You all don't see this, but I had to do my hands on the ground to go left to right, but you read it right to left or backwards. Yeah. It's, it's foundational. Now, one thing that you taught me, and I don't remember, mm -hmm. was how to read pen numbers. Oh, that's fascinating. <laughs> um, anytime you're going to deal with distressed properties, the assumption is everything is a problem until we take all of the layers off of it. Uh, because when we're walking into uh, a foreclosure auction and even a tax sale, we are not buying the common address. We're buying a piece of property that sits in um, a, a parcel. You've got your section, township, and your ranges, but that's what we buy section about the area mm -hmm. and inside the area you'll have a section which mm -hmm. is 640 acres of land right and inside of that section you'll have a block and inside of that block you'll have a parcel number so that's what we buy when we buy real estate and when you're going into distressed properties uh you've got to uh take care of all of the four w's who what when and where does a person who's representing themselves, if I'm going to buy it in pre-foreclosure, does that person have a right to sell that property to me? So then we get into the different kinds of deeds. We get into trust deeds. Trustees deed. Come on, Mark. You stay with me. Stay I'm staying with, with you. It's all uh, coming back to me. <laughs> you know what I remember? Now, I didn't understand this in real estate. And a lot of people think that because you go to real estate school, it teaches you how to sell real estate, which is the biggest myth in the world. Mm -hmm. But I remember one thing that you drilled in on that I've carried with me since then. Uh, uh, well, let me say this one of numerous things. <clears throat> and that's the assumption. You got a lot of people laid up with other people who think that when that person passes away, mm -hmm. they own the property. The property is theirs, right? And they would be amazed that they've went, they've paid mortgage, light, gas, mm -hmm. everything. And if the person passes away, contingent upon how you hold title, the title to the property <laughs> is very that dictates ownership. Mm -hmm. So the children, right, you've been uh, mean to, could come and put your butt out. Now, that's what I got from that situation. Uh, yeah. Um, the reason I pushed so much into Marky is because I felt that you had the ability to absorb it. And um, it's a good thing. It's always a good thing to buy real estate because real estate is one of the multiple streams of income. And what uh, my husband and I always advocate is not getting rich. This is not a get rich quick scheme. This is the creation of wealth. Wealth that will be here long after we're gone. It is generational wealth. So that's that's what this 34 journey, 34 year journey has been all about. So now I actually came before I took your class, mm -hmm. right, to scope her out. <clears throat> okay. Oh, okay. And um because I wanted to know what I was investing in, right? Duh. At the moment, and I just got to get real frank here. At the moment, 
I seen all them white boys following <laughs> you around, wanting to carry your bag from auction to auction to auction. And they standing there, I mean, and they are in 100% all of you. And you were dropping those perils, right? Those nuggets. I said, oh yeah, she is the woman. <laughs> I've never seen so many white men follow one woman before, black woman before in my life. Mark, I gotta go home. Uh, uh, wait, now he already go know. He know they following you around. But guess what? <laughs> He got to be doing something right because you coming home to him, right? But always. Always. He got to be doing something right. But I mean, they were following you around, running down the street. Hold on, Mary. Hold on. I'm like, whoa, what? I'm like, I'm thinking like this the whole time. <laughs> Let me bow down to the queen because you are truly the queen. And what's funny is they, they gave me the name, the queen of foreclosures, because I put queen of foreclosures at Comcast.net, right? <laughs> and that's really how the name came about. But you're the one who, who laid it out for me from the foreclosure timeline, right? Um, I'll, I'll give you uh, another thing. We got real estate attorneys, right? The foreclosure prevention mm -hmm. attorneys. And one thing I tell people all the time, a foreclosure prevention attorney seldom <laughs> prevents foreclosure, but they're real good at delaying foreclosure, That's because of some information you gave me, I had a client who was able to stay in a property two additional years from understanding the foreclosure process. That, that is just so, so critical is that we have an understanding and we address the elephant in the room. Um, without a lack of knowledge, we will perish. Hmm. We will definitely perish because of a lack of knowledge. Um, get the education. Um, and when people are involved in foreclosures, there's a lot of times there's some people think it's a stigma attached to it. But in 2010, there were 52,000 list pendants that were filed in Cook County. So there were 52,000 homes went into foreclosure. I've seen, um, I've seen, the, I've seen different waves. So um, if an individual is going to tap into it, first of all, it's always a good time to do it, but know the season that we're in when it comes to that. Everybody want to get in and flip. That may not be your, your thing, um, but know, get a strategy and work it. Where are we? First of all, your baby said, hey, mom, because I saw it. I thought it was Skylar. So Rochelle says, hey, mom. Yep, watch your mama here, baby. Dropping them nuggets. I thought it was Skylar when I saw the hey mom on That's, that. Uh, <laughs> Rochelle is the youngest of three. Youngest of three. Uh -huh. Where are we right now? Because I know that there is a shortage of listings in real estate. Mm -hmm. Where are we right now in the distressed real estate market? Uh, it was a very, very severe shortage of inventory. And the reason that there is a shortage of inventory, everybody thought that there was going to be a bubble somewhere. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the number of filings, they have consistently decreased. Okay. 2009, 2010, 52,000. For the past two years, Cook County only filed 18,000 foreclosures in Chancery. And those are the properties that feed the foreclosure, they, which is seven months. And then they also feed the properties that's going to go to, to the sheriff sale. And then eventually those properties which don't sell there, those are the ones that you get REO. Mm -hmm. So, ah, so yeah. it went from 52000 at its height. Was that the height? At the height, yeah. Okay. Right. And so you've seen basically decrease down by a third. To 18,000 cases the last two years. Oh, wow. Right. So that's a substantial decrease. Now, when people come into your world, mm -hmm. you know, because there are some myths, do they need cash? Everybody need cash. Everybody need cash. There's no such thing as no money down. Okay. There's no, no, no money there's down. no such thing as no right. money down in your world. Absolutely. So when you, cause people do creative financing, mm -hmm. but when you are going to participate in a distressed piece of properties, first of all, to identify what stage it's in. If you're going to participate in when it's in pre foreclosure, you're going to deal directly with the owner. So perhaps you can get financing or do a short sale in that stage. But if you're going to participate in one of the live auctions, you need cash. Cash. Cash, a deposit, and then 25%, 10%, and the balance is always due within 24 hours. 
So if I came today, I got to have all, I got, I need to have the balance of my money on Monday. Absolutely. Okay. So you need all of your money within 24 hours. So now I have a question from Ron. Ron wants to know when is your class? So when, 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 when's the next time you're going to do a course? Cause I know that you travel extensively because you have, you have paid your dues to society. If I've oh, made yeah. A million dollars off of your knowledge and information, then I am clear there are at least a thousand <laughs> more people, right? Girl, look, he, you a billion, you a billion dollar creator over here, right? Mark, I'm just a country <laughs> girl from Mississippi. I keep telling you from Wait. the Delta. <laughs> now, I'm not going to let everybody know just how good you can cook, but I will say this. When we came out to your house for brunch, I wanted to bring my bathrobe and slippers and just sit on the couch all day because you treated us so good. I did not want to go home and everything was, I can still remember the, the fruit, the sausage, everything, right? Oh my goodness. I, Mark, oh, I used I, to remember that. Ooh, ooh, that's how good it was. Okay. And I don't remember everybody <laughs> cooking because everybody can't cook, but it was the hospitality. You know what they said? People will forget. What you say, but they won't forget how you treat them. And you treated us like royalty when we were at your house. Me, AC, and Freddie was getting ready to just say, can we move in? You need three more, <laughs> three more. So uh, so how would one take class with you? Um, give me a call. You can Facebook me, um, and I will set something up with you. Uh, generally, I prefer doing one-on-one -on -one unless it's a couple people who know each other. And I learned not to put people in classes who don't know each other. So I'm learning. I'm still learning. <laughs> so we usually do one-on-one. -on -one. Um, the focus of the class, it has a three-point objective. So then when you walk out of the class, it's a lot of information. But I'm okay with you knowing what you should be doing. And when you know what you should be doing, it places a fence around you. Um, no value. Know what the liens and encumbrances are in the, in the title and know the status of property taxes. Um, it's three little things, but just last week, I saw an individual walk into the auction and buy a second mortgage. Uh, to have the chain of title is one thing, but it's uh, another thing altogether to be able to analyze that information according to what our state statute indicates. So for those who don't know, I'm gonna let you elaborate, I'm gonna ask another question. <clears throat> What is the likely outcome when you buy a second mortgage? Well, the, the outcome of a, the only, first of all, the only way that you would buy a second mortgage if the value of the property is going to exceed the debt, because to get chain of title, you've got to pay off the first mortgage. Mm. Okay. But I don't advocate individuals doing that. Just buy something that is clean that you can walk out of there and get your deed. You're not going to get your deed that day. You're not going to get keys either. But um, when you buy the first, second mortgage, it's going to wipe out the first. Uh, by the first, it'll wipe out the second. But you can't rely on that because your, uh, your subsequent liens, if they're not named and served in the lawsuit, when you get ready to flip it, it becomes a cloud on the title. Um. Realtors, y'all got to know how to read title. Yes, they do need to know how to read title. Uh, th and that's why I'm forever in someone's class. I teach a lot, but I'm forever in yes. someone's class. So somebody want to know, are you from Tunica? I am Gypsy. <laughs> Mississippi in the house. No, I am from just south of, of uh, Tunica, Quitman County, Mississippi, which is Marks, Mississippi. Okay. Which is where the mule train started from 50 years ago, Martin Luther King. When he was assassinated, they picked up the mule train, mule train in Marks, Mississippi. Are you serious? And we're celebrating 50 years. Oh, wow. Yeah, Get historic. Out of here. We're actually in the museum in Washington, my little hometown. Marks, Mississippi is in the, Marks and Lambert, Mississippi is in the museum. Whoa, okay. Ah, that's good history <laughs> right there. Okay, so you can cook. You know your history, and you've taught a bunch of people how to make some money, right? <laughs> so now, I know that you invest in real estate. I do. But your your investment strategy might not be the traditional investment strategy. Uh, when we started out, my husband and I, uh, we had a plan. Folks, you got to have a plan. You got to have a plan. And at the time, my husband was uh, an executive with uh, Philip Morris. So we determined what it would take for us to live. 
and we backed into a number to say that we need X number of properties because um, I had been fired from corporate America um, after a year or so after we were married. So uh, I had to go home and ask my husband, would he take care of me with my important self? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and he did, bless his heart. So um, we knew that we needed X number of properties to replace his income. We had three daughters that we wanted to educate. And um, we set out maybe for about 10 years, just really a nose to the grind, um, going through the process of creating wealth uh, through real estate, through insurance, through stocks and bonds, mutual funds. Um, it's gotta be, it's gotta be a bucket. So when you get to a certain age, uh, old people in the house, <laughs> I turned 65, Marky. Get girl, come on now. <laughs> Ooh, and you live in uh, your best life. Uh, uh, in a couple of weeks. I'm so glad to be, I get Medicare. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, we, that's, that's how we did it. Life is simple. We complicate it. Wow. We complicate it. Uh, I was talking to a young lady this morning, and she just, to me, it looked like she had everything, but she was just so distraught. And I said, well, first of all, you got to wake up grateful. You got to. You got to be grateful. Um, approach life that your cup is, whatever situation it is, the cup is always half full. Mm. Always half full. Yes, because he promised 10 times, didn't he? Now, somebody, a younger lady, she came on. She says, well, she didn't say she was younger. She says she's just starting out in business. What advice would you give? Now, I'm going to give you my advice. I've always followed the numbers. I've always had a business plan. Um, and I'm, I'm strategic. So I understood that foreclosures and short sales were mm -hmm. coming. That's why I had my husband drive my nine month pregnant, but up to <laughs> Appleton, Wisconsin. Okay. But when I think about it, I came into the real estate business as a loan originator. Mm -hmm. My younger cousin, attorney Chris Slaughter, told me, you know you can get your broker's license uh, and you don't even have to take the pre-license course. So this is the first time I'm ever admitting on Facebook that I became a broker from simply studying the book. I never wow. took the pre-license course. And then I thought it was a good idea that I would hold my broker's license myself. And I didn't know nothing about selling real estate until I called one day to set up my very first showing appointment. <laughs> and uh, the person on the other end of the phone said to me, uh, yes, can I have your MLS ID number, please? I said, what is an MLS ID number? Away. <laughs> and where do I get one of those from? That's when I realized I didn't know anything and that it was going to be important for me to surround myself by people who were smarter than me. The reason I became a broker was because of the numbers. I would make more money per transaction because as a loan originator, I would have had to do 141 transactions to earn the amount of money I wanted to earn in 2004. Mm -hmm. I ended up closing 70 deals that year. I made 240,000, which is what I wanted to make, but I did half of the production based on the yield spread premium and the fact that I worked for a broker and he was getting almost half of my money, right? On the loan side of the business. So for me, it's always been about looking at the numbers. And as a woman of color, there's nothing wrong with earning the most amount of money per hour, working the fewest hours possible. Mm -hmm. And when I say that, that doesn't mean that I don't put in my 50, 60 hours a week. OK, I, I like to work. I actually love working. But what it does mean is that I'm earning enough money to support my business, my lifestyle, my family and creating a legacy for these boys that I have. So I would say smart goals, specific, measurable, obtainable, mm -hmm. relevant and time bound. What would be I, your I advice? Agree. <clears throat> I agree totally. You got to have a plan. Got to have a plan. And Marky broke it down to a, to a whole nother level, but you've got to have a plan and a plan that makes sense. Wow. You know, if, 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 if you want to sell cakes and you're not a baker, you're in the wrong business. <laughs> um, but for a lot of the realtors, don't just sell the properties, invest in it, invest in it. Um, and look long range. I tell people to um, have short-term goals. 
long-term goals and sit down and say, this is where I want to go. How will I get there? And do not be afraid to invest in education. Please do not be afraid to do that. Um, it's important. Do you know every time I invest in education, I earn well over a thousand times the investment? I'm not surprised. Every time. I mean, when I think of Frank Williams taking a class with him, when I think about earning the, a, uh, the ABR designation, mm -hmm. when I think about taking the class with you, when I think about just coming back from the National Speakers Association, taking classes, every single time that I take classes, it increases my income. If you learn just one little thing, yeah, one little nugget that changes how you do business, it will change your life mm -hmm. financially. So let me ask you this question. Now, I know that you offer the classes. Mm -hmm. Are you taking on any new investor clients? And if so, what they need to have in order to even come talk to you? Oh, Mark, <laughs> it ain't that complicated. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you this now. If you come to her and you offer Facebook, Today, you better not give her no problems because I ain't gave her no problems. I don't let people give my friends no problems. So um, what would that entail? Um, if someone is coming and they want me to represent them at the auctions, um, I always ask that you define an area. Um, I, have, um, I have a tick when somebody says, well, anywhere, because it's not anywhere. <laughs> Cook County runs, Cook County has 33 areas. Area 1 is in the northwest quarter of the county, and Area 33 is all the way at the bottom. That's a lot of territory. So define your area. Be realistic. Be realistic. Um, don't say I've got X number of dollars and I want a condo on the lake because then that that doesn't make sense. Okay. So um, define your area. Know what you're working with and be realistic. Okay. And for anyone, you know, what I'm going to do is to walk you through your title, um, help you analyze your title, help it make sense, and I'll tell you what my opinion is. All right. Mm -hmm. And and let me say this. People value your opinion because you've helped a lot of people. And I'm going to say this. People come to me every single day uh, because they've been taken advantage of because they go after get rich quick schemes and games. Mm -hmm. You ain't heard no get rich quick conversation here today. It's a journey. We, but but we understand the terminology and the oh, process, absolutely. right? Absolutely. Um, it's all a process, okay? And you want to surround yourself with people who have skin in the game, who have reputation, not the person just running into town on the white horse, the knight in shining armor. Um, and when I tell you, when I refer people for education, I'm, I'm pretty good. Like, I mean, like, <laughs> I'm referring them to the best people in that area. Uh, and do you only work in Cook County? Because I know we're talking about Illinois, but do you only work in Cook County? <clears throat> um, when I teach, I'm teaching Illinois statute. Okay. Um, and the statute is going to be the same from county to county. It's not varied. So when you learn the statute of when I buy at an auction, what does that mean? Um, it's going to go from county to county. Okay. So, yeah. And what's the foreclosure process uh, time? Because I know at one time we were having great delays. If one was to receive a notice of default today, mm -hmm. about how many more months do they have in that well, property? Well, once the notice of default go out, the list pendants, the statute is seven months. Okay. And in that seven-month window, it is important that the owner act. They have to act. And a lot of times people think, well, I'm not going to go to court, but you have to go to court. When you don't go to court and file an appearance, then you get on speed down. But you've got seven months. And in that seven-month window, it affords an investor and or a realtor the opportunity to engage that owner. Um, I will tell you that anytime you engage an owner who's in pre-foreclosure, reverse the situation and say, how would I feel if this were me? Real estate is the psychology of dealing with people. You deal with people that you like. So um, reverse the situation. Life is reciprocal. You can guarantee that you're always going to get what you give. If you plant um, a seed in the wrong soil, it's going to come back. It's going to come back. So treat people the way that you want to be treated. In that seven-month window, it affords a realtor the opportunity to approach that owner 
um, to perhaps do a short sale or to sell the property. But again, just like title searching is important at the auction stage, it is just as important when you're dealing with an individual in pre-foreclosure. A lot of times realtors will show up at the auction because they didn't know the person that they were dealing with was in foreclosure. But when you took a, when you take that listing, you should always check title. You're checking title when you take a listing to see, first of all, if you're going to get paid. Hello. Okay, I, I can get a... Say, can, can I get a... Can I get a... Amen. Check the title. Um, to see if you're going to get paid. But a lot of times there's too too many liens and encumbrances in the title. So where are you going to get your money from? Uh, when when the 8020s were, were out, short selling the first and leaving the second out there, that's a problem. But identifying if the person who's representing themselves really have a right to sell the property is very critical. And... Um, a lot of times they don't uh, let realtors know that they're in foreclosure. So when you do, when you pull a chain of title and you see that the list pendants is there, then you're not surprised. Yes. You know what's funny? I remember one time my client wanted to make an offer on a property and I always would go pull the information. And so I actually called the realtor because in the MLS, they did not have it checked as a short sale. Mm -hmm. And so I, I asked the realtor, I said, well, do you realize that a notice of default has been filed on the property and that the first and second mortgage exceed the amount that you have the property listed for? And she said, let me get back to you. Okay. Well, no way that deal was going to work. And my clients were willing to make an offer, but it was overpriced in the MLS. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the things. It's public information. So Absolutely. if a notice of default has been filed, it is definitely public information. And our MLS, the MRED system here in Northern Illinois, through what is called a third party to the realtist, realist, the realist, mm -hmm. we have realtist, but the realist, um, you can pull that information and you can still pull properties. I believe that Teresa Panzica might hop on, uh, but she is an attorney. I actually did deals with her father. They specialize in short sales. And so there's always mm -hmm. options and other ways to acquire real estate today. And the auction is definitely a viable one, but they need to work with somebody who understands everything yeah, that you understand. Yeah, got, got to read title. It's, it's your base, it's your foundation. So now I have tagged Mary in this post. You feel free to inbox her. She will send you information. Mm -hmm. She likes to work one-on-one. -on -one. I told you I took my class with Ophelia. So you will never have to worry about there being 10, 15 people. Because oh, no. you don't even like no. dealing with 10 to 15 no. <laughs> people. Too... I think you like three to four. Yeah. Is, is, yeah. And, and you want them yeah. to be friends. Um, And bring your walking shoes. Because you're going to do some walking. But I know we went to the Cook County Treasurer, the Cook County Recorder of Deeds, the Cook County Clerks of Court, yeah. the Cook County. Oh, I learned a lot about uh, taxes. We went to the three auctions and then we mm -hmm. sat down and went over some Q&A. So it was a, a fabulous day. Actually, your, without, yes, your class is probably one of the most interactive courses I've ever taken because it is hands-on. It's going into these different offices yeah. and looking through what they actually have on file. So I can't recommend your course enough. Uh, I hope that somebody takes it and applies it the way that I applied it, and it'll change <laughs> their bottom line, too. Is there anything you want to tell everybody in closing? A lot of people, let me just say this, uh, Gerald says, hey, Carlene says, great wisdom, Pierre Clark. Hey, Pierre, says two legends in the house, bravo. Uh, let's see here, Denise, what advice we gave the advice of Tunica. We talked about that, cash <laughs> is king. So we've had uh, some great dialogue. Um, if Share Mary, okay? Um, realtors, don't just sell the property, buy the properties. Say it again. Don't just sell the properties, purchase the properties, and get involved Um this is a process. This is a journey. And um, give back. Get Oh, you got to give back. You got to give back. Because you get it back. You get it back tenfold. Right. right. It, well, it works if you work it. Yes, it does. Okay. And so make sure you reach out. I want you to understand the foreclosure process better, especially everyone in Illinois. I don't know if you caught that, but the Allen, the Illinois statute is the same from county to county. Yes, it is. So you're going to get that information, but by far the most interactive course uh, I've ever taken. Uh, 
ever. I mean, my courses aren't that interactive, so I got to step my interaction game up now that I'm thinking well, about it. This is something that you can't teach um, from a conference. Yeah. This is something you can't teach. Um, if we're almost done, I'd like to plug something. Well, go on okay. and plug it. Yes. I would like to plug my church. Oh, okay. Come on, we church plug. We are Apostolic Faith Church at 39th in Indiana. We are on next Saturday doing our annual financial fair. And what is so exciting about this year, Marky, is that we're going to do at the same time mm -hmm. that we do the adult financial fair, we're also going to be doing a youth financial fair. Oh, that's awesome. So we're just we're just really excited about that. Now, so you we're got a new church, to, right? Y'all yeah, got a new church building yeah, down there looking yeah. fabulous at the corner. Wait, because let me get my corner straight. You are on the northeast corner of 39th, 39th in Indiana. Indiana. Um, ah. For youth, um, we have been broken out into two sections, 6th to 8th grade, and from, 12, from 9 to 12. But youth will be exposed to the rule of 72. I didn't learn the rule of 72 until I was in my late 20s. Uh, adults will have the opportunity to choose from entrepreneurship. I will be closing out the section, the session for an hour, just talking about foreclosures, Wait credit, a credit budgeting. I need you to give me the flyer because I need to come back and post this in the description because y'all need now. <laughs> so let me get this straight. Because okay. you just dropped, you plug, but you gave them an opportunity here okay. that they can come and hear you for one hour mm -hmm. and get those extra nuggets. And because you're going to be in the house of the Lord, I know they're going to be a plethora <laughs> of nuggets. So if you need to pick her brain, right, it would be at this event. Yes. All right. Don't call my girl picking her brain, right? No, you can't take her to lunch. Heck, we no. still got to go to lunch, yeah. right? <laughs> but either A, you need to take her class or B, you need to show up. Next, tell them the date and time. Next Saturday, uh, please go online and register. I'll, I'll send the flyer send to the you, afc.org. Our pastor, Bishop Horace Smith, um, is very, very um, active and uh, want us to teach financial literacy to our people. Well, guess we just hopped on. Anita Clinton, she said, hey, hey Mary Richardson and Marky <laughs> Lemons. This brings back so many great memories. Look, you know we was getting ready to... Look, the itis has set in when we were at Perry's house because that food was so good. We like, can we have to go plates? <laughs> Absolutely. But that is an awesome job that your church is doing. I definitely want to let people know because, one, I live in the Bronzeville area. And the fact that you're bringing in financial literacy for our children is absolutely fabulous. Because this generation is a different generation. Absolutely. And they're going to make some change because they, look, they sick and tired of us. We done, we done messed the system up for them and they want to recreate. Absolutely. So we're very excited about that. I'm excited for you. Very excited. Entrepreneurship, credit, budgeting, um, credit restoration, uh, ABCs of investing for the adults. Like I said, the young people will be, will be taught cash flow, banks, currency exchanges, and the rule of 72. Gone. I know I know everybody out there know about the rule of 72, right? Wait, but if they don't know, <laughs> then they need to be well yes. next Saturday. Yes, but you do need to register. You, you do. do need to register. So tell them that link again. Was that AFC? Uh, AFCChicago.org. I think if you go into that site, it'll lead you to our Kingdom Stewardship Ministry. Kingdom Stewardship Ministry. But just go into AFC.org. Well, Mary, I can't thank you enough for thank taking you. time out of your busy, busy schedule, because I had to get in between two trips, uh, for you to come over here and <laughs> share. But one thing that I pride myself on is I always like to be the dummy in the room. So I surround myself with people